Hey guys, Coach Katie here. Um, just wanted to put together a quick little video for you guys to reference um, in terms of recruiting and kind of getting started. Um, this will also help you maximize your summer lacrosse, your travel lacrosse, uh, regardless of who you're playing with. Um, but hopefully this is helpful. And as always, if you guys ever have any questions or concerns, need recommendations or advice, I'm always here to help. So the first step, um, you know, after you've decided that playing in college might be something that you want to do is put together a list of schools, um, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, club, NAIA, um, that you would be interested in. Now, there's a lot of factors. There's a ton of schools to choose from that have women's lacrosse programs nowadays and more and more each year. So have an honest conversation conversation with yourself with mom and dad about you know how far away do you want to go do you want to go far do you want to stay close to home in state out of state um, which kind of will lead you into money um, I see a lot of families kind of get to the end of the process and they haven't discussed what they can afford or what the student will be able to afford and they end up um, you know their offers end up falling through because they didn't keep that in mind throughout the process. So very important to be realistic and to be honest um, in terms of the finances. You can visit um, FAFSA.gov and do, you know, input your information and just kind of get an idea of what you guys would qualify for if student loans is the way you're going to go. Um, if that's not an issue for you guys, uh, obviously some schools cost more <laughs> than others, private schools versus in-state versus out-of-state. Um, and again, if you have any questions about that, um, happy to help. Um, I think it's really important to have a good mix of schools. Um, I know everyone kind of catches that D1 bug. Um, and while that's great and definitely don't want to knock the Division One experience, I played Division One my first two years of college, uh, that's not right for everybody. And don't get caught up in the name of a school or how good a program might be right now because uh, you know, programs shift all the time. For instance, JMU won their first ever national championship last year, and no one even would have given them a nod three years ago. So programs can change all the time. Um, and like I said, don't get caught up in which division. I think, you know, Division One and Division Two offer uh, athletic scholarships, while Division Three can't. They usually can put together academic aid uh, for athletes that the typical student wouldn't have access to. Um, so try not to get caught up in the division. You can have an amazing experience anywhere as long as it's the right fit for you. Um, some other factors to keep in mind are, you know, if you know what you want to study, obviously a school that doesn't have that major is not going to be an option for you. So don't waste your time um, looking at schools that don't have the major that you think that you want. Um, there's lots of resources online. Again, I'm happy to help uh, if you have trouble or need help making this list. But the best thing to do is go into Google Docs or Excel, create a spreadsheet with um, the name of the school, what division it is, and then you want to put the coach's name and their email address, which is they're all listed on uh, the women's lacrosse page um, of each of the teams. Again, if you need help finding coaches information, I'm happy to help uh, with that as well. But ultimately, playing in college is your dream. So this isn't up to mom and dad. This isn't up to me. It's up to you to take the time to make that list because it does take some time, especially doing all of the research. And like I've said a thousand times, if you ever need help, I'm happy to do that, but I'm not going to do this for you. And neither are mom and dad. Um, the next step after you've made that list and you have all of the coaches contact information, it's really important for you to reach out. I call this the intro email. You've got to introduce yourself. Um, they get a thousand and one or more, um, emails, especially during high recruiting season, which what is what we're about to enter into over the summer, tons of girls trying to get seen. So it's really important that you reach out. You have a very well-written introductory email that in the subject line has your full name, your position, and your class year. Um, the intro email should s express interest in their program. I always like to say, show that you've done your research on their program, maybe include some facts, stats, anything about their program that you like or that you know about. Again, this does require some research, but it does add a personal touch that I know coaches really, really appreciate. They work really hard. 
with their programs. So just like with anything else, they love that little bit of acknowledgement and it does set you apart. It shows that you are actually interested. Um, you also want to include your GPA. You want to include uh, your your position or what you're looking, what position you're looking to get recruited for. Um, you also want to include if you know your major that you might be interested in pursuing so that you can say, again, another personal touch, hey, I've done my research. I see that your school offers this major that I'm interested in. Um, and then you definitely want to include a link to your high updated highlight video um, if you have one. If you don't have a highlight video, I highly, highly recommend that you get one made or that you have mom and dad make one yourself. Um, if you have questions on how to do this, happy to answer that. There's a bunch of online resources where you can take video from your iPhone or your iPad, upload it, cut it, spot shadow, put all the information on there that you need. It does take a little bit of time, but it is possible to do yourself, or you can outsource it. There's a ton of companies out there who put together highlight videos. Um, they are a little bit pricey, but they are, I mean, they look professionally done. Um, the reason why it's very important to have a highlight video, because this is the number one question I get asked about this. It's important because of where we live and the tournaments that we go to, we just simply do not get the same exposure that a lot of other clubs northeast of us do. So in order for a coach to be able to at least see you, to know that they're interested in you, that's a really easy way um, for, them, for them to get a taste of what you bring to the table and what you offer. They're also, if they've seen you play, on your highlight video and they are interested, they are exponentially more inclined to come watch you at a tournament. Um, which kind of leads me to my next thing. Before each tournament, and I don't mean the night before we start playing, I mean the week before, two weeks out, as soon as you can get this email out. I know sometimes with the tournament schedule changing, um, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But as soon as you know your tournament schedule, the college coaches that you've been talking to and that you want to come see you play and that are you know are attending the tournament, they need to know your schedule too. Um, when I was college coach, I would have a schedule and I would see at least four to six girls play all on different teams within one game at the tournament, one round of games. So if you aren't on that schedule going into it, they're not going to have time to come see you and it's kind of a waste. So you want to make sure that you send a follow-up email. You can also do the first tournament as your introductory introductory email. Obviously, hey, this is who I am. I'm interested. My GPA, my highlight video, blah, blah, blah. I'm attending our first tournament, which is XYZ. Here's my schedule. Would love for you to come check me out if you're interested in me after watching my highlight tape. Um, that's a great way to kind of combine and get a lot of the information across. Um, but I also have girls that do it separately. It's really up to you. I say that it's good to be able to send this coach an email, um, you know, as often as you have a legitimate reason to. That way, you know, when they see the same name kind of coming up in their inbox, they might not look at you the first time, but they'll look at the second or third email. So that's kind of my spiel about uh, getting started with recruiting. Um, I think the last tidbit of information that I'll give you is it's really important for parents and players to be realistic um, with, with the schools that we're reaching out to. Um, not everyone is going to go play at UNC, and that doesn't mean that you aren't good. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to play in college. That's just not the right path for you. That's kind of what I was mentioning earlier with um, don't get caught up in playing for D1. There are over a hundred Division One programs out there and tons of D2 and honestly even more D3. Plus you have club, NAIA. Again, it's just really important to do your research. Um, you know, what kind of lifestyle do you want? Do you want to eat, sleep, and breathe lacrosse in college or do you want to do it just something for fun? And you want to make sure that all those things match up and that the school that you're trying, the list of schools that you have, really check a lot of the boxes of the things that you're looking for. As always, if you have any questions or if you need any help with this process, I'm here to do that. That's part of my job. So please, we can set up a time uh, to sit down one-on-one. -on -one. I've done this with a lot of girls. Uh, but we definitely want to make sure that you're on the right track, that you're maximizing your summer, and that you are getting the recruiting exposure that you need. Thank you so much, guys. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'm really looking forward to the season.